The Knicks had been 10-0, Wally, against under 500 teams. But I mentioned they didn't shoot well from downtown, and they only went 22 of 32 from the line. If you want to win in the NBA, you better play good basketball. And the Knicks didn't play as well as they're capable of playing tonight. And Utah's 6-5 and five at home. It's a tough place to play. I played a bunch of games there. You deal with altitude. You deal with hostile fans. And this was a desperate Utah Jazz team that had lost three games in a row. Knicks went in there, got off to a good start. Julius Randle, again, outstanding performance. You know, was carrying the team for most of the game. I got you over here. You look Sorry. like the Knicks with the basketball Sorry. tonight. Fumbling, your, fumbling your pen around. You're all discombobulated. But you're not going to win on the road in the NBA if you don't play a little bit tighter game. And the Knicks have to figure out a way to tighten up their game a little bit, not let teams like this get confidence because – these are prideful players and guys that, you know, have had success in the league one year or another. And the Utah Jazz came up with a big win that they felt like they should win. They feel like they should win at home. Any game they set foot on their home floor, they feel like they should win. Now, conversely, you look at this game, the Knicks look like, hey, we can get this one, not three starters out of the lineup. But if you don't take care of business and earn it in the NBA, you're not going to get the win. Again, the Knicks with about six minutes to go down 106 to 89. And in such a short period of time, they had the ball, as we showed everybody, a couple of chances, Hart and Brunson, to tie the game. I know. This team plays hard. This team does everything to get themselves back into the game. The problem is they only gave up 52 points in the first half, and in the second half, the defensive issues were a big problem. Walker Kessler was just go running rough shot out there with no Mitchell Robinson out there. You with the block and then Taylor Hoyton Tucker in transition, you give up easy baskets, becomes a seven point lead. That's a nice Hartenstein dunk to cut the lead to 13. And then Dante DiVincenzo, I like him in the starting lineup, Bill, I really do. Randall did a good job finding him for some big threes. That three cut it to 10. Then in transition, he gets that bucket to go, and the lead was only a five point game at that time. So Knicks are doing a good job of getting themselves back into this game. That's the three, excuse me, that cut it to three and this was the possession down three wide open look for Josh Hart no good great rebounded by quickly gets it out to Brunson a 40 plus percent three point shooter good luck he misses it so you're down three you have to foul you know Utah tried to give you opportunities at the end of the game by turning the ball over um, which is you know not good plays by them they kept you in the game gave you some opportunities but at that point you need to make some heroic shots and heroic plays in order to get this game to overtime. The Knicks tried, but they came up short, and this is a daunting road trip, and this is a tough way to start that daunting road trip. Knicks often need more than just Julius Randle, but yes. tonight Jalen Brunson, 0 of 6 from downtown. You yeah. mentioned how well he's been shooting all year from downtown, and R.J. Barrett tonight only 9 points, went 3 of 16 from the floor. Listen, Jalen Brunson... He takes tough threes. You know, he's been on fire from the three-point line. He knows just as well as I do. You can't live by the three, and you can't die by the three. He still got points. He still got to the free throw line. Uncharacteristically missed some free throws that he normally makes. He was a little bit off tonight, and that's going to happen. But he still got to 22, 23 points, whatever it was. Um, the key is the defensive effort. You can't give up this many points to a Utah Jazz team that doesn't have three starters. In the first half, you didn't play great. You were down two, gave up 52 points. In that second half, they got, what, 65 points? And they didn't score much at the end of the game. They had built themselves a 17-point lead because your defense was not reliable like it normally is. Utah did have Lowry marketing back, their leading yep. scorer. He had missed the last eight games with a bad hammy, but he returned tonight for 23 points. Really interesting night. Wally for Julius Randle in terms of how he scored his points. He had 14 in the first quarter, none in the second quarter, 16 points in the third quarter, and then only two in the fourth quarter. But you total it up, finished with 32 points tonight. Listen, you total it up. He was a, he was a monster. He was a beast out there. He played a tremendous. Part of that reason is the first and third quarters, he goes the full 12-minute stretch. So when you have it going, you're going to continue to get him the ball and keep him hot. Then when he sits down on the bench for four, five, six minutes, and then he gets back into the second quarter with six minutes to go, sometimes other guys have it going, so Julius Randle's going to look to pass and make plays for other guys. But overall, these are monster performances. 14 for 23, outstanding percentages, 12 boards, six assists. Could have been more, of, more assists if the Knicks were knocking down more threes because he got guys some wide-open looks. R.J. Barrett was one of them that's getting a lot of good looks at the three-point line thanks to Julius Randle. So he is absolutely doing his job, playing like an all-star, playing like an all-NBA player. 
He just needs some help from the other guys, but he also needs the scores for the opponents not to get up into the 110s and 120s. How about this? Most three-point field goals made in wow. Knicks history. Randall wow. two for six tonight. He's now fourth all-time, one more than Jamal Crawford in Knicks history in terms of most three-point field goals made. All right, we set this up. This was a game, when you look at this road trip, and again, ahead now, yet Phoenix Friday, mm -hmm. at the Clippers Saturday, mm -hmm. at the Lakers Monday. This was one, I think, that when you look at it, you had really hoped that they would be able to get. No question. You know, it's the first game of the trip. That's always a tough one, getting out there, getting comfortable. Utah's not an easy place to play. It's not an easy place to what win. What is it? The altitude, is it? The altitude, the fans, you know, that's a that, that team is a young team that's obviously rebuilding. But remember last year, they were the surprise of the league to start the season. They play hard every single night. You know, they have personnel. Danny Ainge is a very accomplished general manager, and he's putting together a group of guys that are going to that are going to compete. And the Knicks, I felt, like the compete level, it's a little bit of an issue on that defensive end of the floor. Now, obviously, you're missing one of the best defenders in the league, and you're going to lose him for eight weeks, but you're going to have to figure out a way, like Tom Thibodeau says, as a team, we have to pick up the slack defensively, and we cannot allow this many points. This is just not going to be able to be consistent for us to allow teams to score like this. All right, Monica McNutt, call the game, help call the game tonight on ESPN Radio, 98.7 FM. I know we got issues when Monica gives me a text and says I'm stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stressed, Pete. I know. I'm so stressed. I, I now you are a full-fledged member of this ball club. I don't, I don't think I need to talk to you because you and I are both sort of irrational. I think I need to go to Wally, and I think I need Wally to explain what we witnessed. And is it as simple as a dismal night from behind the three-point line and perhaps overlooking what should have been by record your easiest opportunity on this West Road, road trip? Because I am baffled how the Knicks were unable to pull this off with the Jazz being down three of their starters. You're 100% correct. I mean, going into a game on paper, I agree with you, Monica. The Knicks probably, you know, you would think, you know, with all the odds and this and that, that they would get this game. But the bottom line is there's a lot of pride in that locker room. You know, you know, competing at a high level of basketball. The other team's trying to win just as much as the Knicks are. And tonight, you know, if you don't play to your capabilities and play to the level that you're capable of playing, you're not going to win games in the NBA. And the Knicks fell short as far as their compete level on the defensive end of the floor. And that's becoming a trend that's becoming a little bit of an issue. Wally, and Monica, go ahead, go ahead. That's a scary trend. I mean, Peter, I'm not sure where you were going to go next, but I think to more than anything, that's the part that I am most concerned but with as you move forward. Because while he's absolutely right, I, I mentioned to you guys that I was here last week with this squad. And what is unique about a team in this position is that Will Hardy is looking for every opportunity to show them how much progress we're making, how much growth we're making. And so when they had the Knicks down, they went ahead and put them down on the mat. And Colin Sexton in particular, Larry Markinen in his return, played big. Now, if we chalk up the three-point shooting, they got to dig deep in that suitcase, find out where it was because it didn't make it to this particular game. I can live with that. But the defense, I'm with Wally. Like, you're going to have to find a way to get back to the signature defense. I understand the absence of Mitchell Robinson, but even the guards, like, you're going to have to do a better job of trying to keep guys in front of you and communicating on screen actions. Now, all that being said, the cliche that we always talk about and is always said about this league, Wally, it's a make or miss league. The Knicks missed, as we've talked yeah. about. Nine of 39 from three and 22 of 32 from the line. Can you? Yeah. Uh, granted, guys, the defense. Yeah. But if they shot the ball well or better tonight, well, they win the game. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you. It's just it, it, it's a tone of the game. That's the thing. When you mm -hmm. allow a team to, you know, Allen brought up a good point early on in the first quarter. The Knicks had them down 10. Put them away. Take their spirits away. Put them down 20. So then when they do make a little bit of a run, they're only down 10. That's where the Knicks let this team hang around. They let this team get confidence. And what you, once you let a team get a good confidence at home, you're in trouble, I think, Monica. What do you think? I would agree with you, right? And I was I said on the radio broadcast to Pat, there's this sound going around Instagram, guys, where the first part of it is the horns, the beautiful horns in Earth, Wind & Fire's song September, right? And that's supposed to indicate things going well in your life, the beauty of it all. Then the second part of that audio is like, burp, 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 burp. it literally sounds like that to indicate reality hitting. And tonight, this was a burp, 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 burp. rhythmless performance across the board. And so I just want to pack it up, throw it away, and move on. <laughs> 
Monica, I think you have to retune your instrument for the rest of the show. <laughs> that, that's exactly how, You get the point then, Pito. You understood. Can you play the, the trumpet? Watch the, this one no. down the can toilet, you play, Monica. Can you play the I'll clarinet? You. No Watch instruments. It. No can you play the flute? <laughs> Uh, harmonica for okay. like a couple of beats. Harmonica rhymes with Monica. Monica, on the harmonica. I like it. Uh, we'll see you on Friday. You guys are at Phoenix. Uh, have a good trip there, and we'll talk to you in a couple days. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, what do you think about being out of harmony? I guess that's that's being out a of great tune. point. Yeah. That's what it is. And if you're not, you know, in in key, in tune, if you're not in sync as a team, it's tough to win in this league. It really is. It's a fine line, a very fine line. Knicks right now are 13 and 10. They were taking care of business against teams that they should have. But a lot of those games were good road wins. Those are any road win in the NBA is a great road win. You take them wherever you can get them. In this case, the Knicks were not playing at their best and they did not earn a win that they really could have used on this road trip.